This is Kevin King with Pinehurst Websites, and this is step two in my series on creating a Shopify website for 2019. This tutorial is going to walk you through adding products to your site. Uh, so if you haven't already created a trial, which we did in step one, you can click on start a free trial and you can create a site and that'll create uh, the admin in your store, which I have opened up right here on my store. Just a note to get back to your admin, it's a good idea to just bookmark the name in the address bar right here. And this is going to allow you to quickly get back to log into your store if you ever need to and i like to drag it onto the bookmark bar as well so to get started the shopify does prompt you to add products to your store so the easiest way to do that is to just uh, click on add a product or to use the menu on the left hand side right here and click on that to add products to your store the first time it's going to say add a product here and the next time it's going to say add a product in the upper right hand corner once you have some products and then when you come to products it's going to list them all here and you'll see that in a second so let's go ahead and click add a product so the product page is going to come up and we're going to add a title to our product i've already typed something out that i'm going to use for my title and i'm going to add a pair of earrings and i already have an image and a description for my product so i'm just going to paste those in you'll just want to type in the title of your product make your title very descriptive include in this case the item or earring so you want to make sure you include basically what it is within the title and that's going to help within search when uh, your item is being searched for in search engines so let's go and create a very good description you want it to be as descriptive as possible. So now I have a title and a description. I want to add a product type. And the first time you add a product type, uh, there's not going to be any in here. These will also be used most likely in creating your categories or your collections as well. So we're going to make this, ca uh, this product type earrings. Tiramisu Limited for the vendor is going to be ours. And then we're going to upload an image. So I already have an image here and I'm going to use that image. And once you create an image, uh, it's very important that you put what's called alternate text into it. And all you need to do is copy your title and then put that in where it says ALT and you want to edit the alt text and this will help uh, Google and other search engines to understand what this image is. So now we've got our we've got our type, we've got our uh, vendor. We don't have a collection yet. We're going to assign that in a few minutes, but I'm also just going to use a tag so I can show you how tags work as well. So I'm going to create a tag. They're case sensitive. So in order not to get confused, it's a good idea to use camel case, which means capitalize the first letter of each word and that way you're consistent throughout. So when you hit comma or enter, that will enter that. And now you can see I've got this tag underneath. If I want to remove it, I just hit the X. But uh, let's go ahead and put in a price real quick. And if you want to do a compare at price uh, where it's crossed out, you can add that to the right and that would do that. Uh, if you want to charge t uh, taxes on the product, you can just leave this checkbox. If you need to create a SKU, you can do that here. And if you have barcodes for your items, you can do that here. For inventory, you can choose to track it or not to track it. Uh, this is a handmade item. So I'm just going to put in a quantity of one. And you can put in, uh, you want to use Shopify Tracks product inventory. Um, if you only have one, you can never get it again. You don't want to check allow customers to purchase this product when it's out of stock. If you can get more, you may want to allow checkbox and allow customers to purchase when it's out of stock. If you're not worried about inventory and you can always make something anytime you want, you can use the do not track inventory. Uh, if it's a physical product, leave this checked. Also, you'll just want to put in a weight and there'll be a drop down to the right. So in my case, I'm going to use ounces. Uh, you can use whatever you need if it's kilograms or grams. And then uh, if you have any customs tariff codes, if you ship overseas, you can put that in here. And that's what you need to put in. Leave it on Shopify unless you're using Amazon Fulfillment or something, which you can uh, hook this up to Amazon FBA as well. 
uh, and if you have multiple variants of an item we'll get into that in just a minute but um, this is going to be a preview of how it would come up in a search engine on this particular product so let's just do a quick google search for this item i actually took this from another one of uh, my sites so we can just go over and we can do a, uh, a google search right here and we're going to paste the search it and you'll see because there's alternate text uh, you do get a lot of results uh, from tiramisu.com which is where i took this from and uh, these are all tiramisu.com in the search results so you want to make sure you put in that alternate text so your images can come up and you see that's the first image um, so by putting in that alternate text it does help you to come up and search uh, depending on how competitive it is uh, you may come up on the first page of a search or you may come up further down but uh, it will take a little bit of time to work on your SEO so that you can come up and search so let's go back to the admin and let's save the product in the upper right hand corner. After you've saved your product, you want to click the view button, which is going to be above the product. It's going to say duplicate view and promote. The view button is in the middle, so click that. And that's going to show you a preview of what your product looks like on the product page on the website. So that's all there is to creating a product and that's if a product is a single variant product. So if you have a product that has multiple variants, it's a little different in the creation process. So let's go ahead and go into that now. So now that we know how to create a product, let's look at creating products that have options. So here's an example of a product that has options. This is a dress and it comes in multiple sizes. So anytime you're dealing with apparel or you're dealing with things that may have multiple options so this is actually called an option size and then these are called variants so the small medium large would be different variants or variations of this product option so now the next example is going to be one that would have multiple options so this one has the option of size and color it's a good idea if you have a lot of sizes and color to use multiple products in other words uh, don't try to create one mega product necessarily because you're limited to a hundred variations or a hundred variants so one variant would be green and a size medium and another would be small uh, in in green so another one would be for instance small and blue now you notice when I clicked on this it also changed the option of the variant so this is another option so you can have multiple options on an item but it's a good idea uh, to not overdo it with more than 100 variants uh, if you are going to do over 100 variants you can use an app to extend the functionality of shopify and here's an example of an app where you have more than the default is three options in shopify so this one has a color it's got a, a name it has a custom photo upload and then it also has a custom personalized note so you have the four options so basically you can add unlimited options by using an app so you can find product option apps in the app store there's also a link on my website Pinehurst websites uh, that has a link to bold apps under helpful links and it, it has a, a free trial on a product options app so that's just a number of ways you can do it. We're going to go ahead and set up one multivariant item so that you can see how the setup works for this type of uh, product. Okay, for setting up a product that has multiple variants, what we're going to do is we're going to go to products on the left hand menu and then that'll bring up the products page in the upper right hand corner. We'll click add a product and then we're just going to put in a title and a description. So I'm going to create that polo shirt so that we can see a product with multiple options and multiple variants. So I'm just going to paste my title in here and then I'm just going to paste a description in here as well. Okay, I'm just going to create a new type and it's going to be shirt. Tiramisu Limited, I'll make the vendor. I'm not going to add a tag, but I'm going to upload multiple images because I'm going to have want to have the ability to click on the drop down and change that color 
So I'm going to go ahead and just put in the images that I'm going to use first here. So I'm going to add my red shirt. I'm going to add my blue shirt. And when you click on upload image and you find your image, you can just double click on it and it will add that in from your photos. So uh, if I want to put in some alternate text on these items, I'll just go to each item. Maybe customize it with the color. Okay, so now I have my images that I'm going to use. I'll just put in a price. And if I want to have Shopify track inventory, I can put in my quantity. Uh, but once I, I change this to multiple items, I'm going to have to enter a quantity for each. I'm going to change this to ounces. It's about what a shirt will weigh. And I'm going to add my variance. So my first option choice is going to by default enter size, but I could change that to anything I wanted. So I'm going to just put in my sizes. After each size, hit comma or enter, and it will enter it. Okay, so now I have my first option. And you can see it's created options down here. And then I need to put in inventory for the ones that I want to have. If I don't put in inventory, I'll leave this out. So you can see it will say sold out. So now as I put in another option, it's automatically going to add these. And it's best to do this when you're first setting up your options to put in all the different options you're going to have. And you can see that it is creating options for each one of these underneath. So then I can put in the sizes that are the quantity that I want. And if you want to put in individual barcodes on an item, you can do that as well. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to just go ahead and save this and then I can add an image for each one. So once I've saved this, I can go ahead and I can go to uh, add images on the item. So all the blue ones, I want to add the blue image to. And as I check these, uh, once I check these, I get this uh, action bar that I can do some other things with. And that one of the things I'm going to want to do is add an image. So on this one, the action I'm going to do is update the image for this one so that the, the image is blue for all of these. And I already have that image, so I'm just going to save it. And it's going to put that image there so that when I choose that on the drop down, it changes the color to blue. So I'm going to do the same thing with green. And you can update quantities in bulk as well this way. Now you notice when I uh, saved it or when I updated it, the checkboxes stayed. So you have to uncheck the ones that you just did, or you can just clear all the checks by hitting this check all and uncheck all, uh, this main, main box on top of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and do the last ones, which are going to be the red ones, and go to actions and update the image. So everything is updated now. Uh, if I wanted to change uh, any information in individual variants, I can go in there. I'm just going to show you also, uh, I'm going to change the price on this one, on the green small, and make it uh, 35.95 so that you can see, change it on the, uh, the price to 35.95 on the small. I'll do it the same thing on the other small sizes as well. And that way you can see that when you change variants, you'll see that it changes the color as, I mean, the, it changes the price. When you change variants, it changes the price as well. And then after I do that, when I, up, when I update the images, I don't have to save, but when I update the prices or any of this other information in the boxes, I do have to save the changes. 
So now we can go back up to the top of the page and we want to hit that view, which is in the center between duplicate and promote. And if we just click on view, we're going to see that on the small size, it's 35. But if we change to the medium size, it's 39. And uh, if we change to the large size, we can see it's sold out as, because we didn't put any inventory in that one. And then if we choose the drop downs, you can see that it changes uh, the image to the correct image for each item, regardless of what you're on in the sizes. So basically this assigns the variant image when somebody clicks on it in the drop down, And you can specifically assign the image and you can assign specific prices and specific inventory. Also you can do specific SKUs. So you can go in and you can edit all of that information on this particular small blue SKU. See when I click on that, it gives me the option to edit everything on the small blue. So just want to show you how to do that so that you can do products, dresses, or if you were doing coffee, that had 32 ounce sizes and 16 ounce sizes. These are the ways that you would set up products like that with variants and different options. And then uh, one quick note for going back to the main item. If you wanna reorder the way the images appear on the site, so let's just look at the site real quick. You may wanna have, since we have in the drop down, we have blue, green, red. If we want to reorder that so that the first item that comes up is blue, for instance, we can reorder that on the page simply by dragging this to the front and then dragging this second. And then if we save, we save this item, well, we don't even have to save it actually when you're doing images, uh, you see that that makes the blue the default item. That's the last thing I want to do on variants right now, but stay tuned for the next video in the series, which is going to be step three, adding collections to your site.